Hey guys, welcome to the channel of the Programming Club of IIT Madras. This is Kashyap, one of the coordinators of the Programming Club. I will be explaining problems A and B of code forces around 948 division 2 along with the codes as a part of this editorial video. So let's begin with question A. This question mentions that there is a boy with n moves and some cubes that he has to build a tower out of them. And in each move he can either add one cube on top of the tower or remove one cube from the top of the tower. He is starting with zero cubes on the tower. So he has to get a resultant of m cubes after these n moves. Both of these n and m are given as inputs to this question. So let's analyze this question as two scenarios, one where n is less than m and one where n is greater or equal to m. Where n is less than m, we can clearly say that it is not a possible situation because we have to have more cubes than the number of moves itself because the maximum number of cubes we can place in each move is 1. So when n is less than m, the answer is no. So when n is greater or equal to m, we have to check whether it is yes or a no. So let's use the first m moves of these n to get the resultant number of m cubes. So after this, we have a resultant remaining number of moves as n minus m as we can see. So we should use this n minus m moves such that the number of cubes should not change as we already have m cubes. So we can see that alternatively adding a cube and removing a cube will get a resultant of zero that is plus one and minus one will give zero. So with every two moves we can get a resultant zero. So these n minus m moves should be made such that with every two moves the resultant is zero. So we can say that n minus m should be an even number in which half of those should be plus one and the other half should be minus one. If not, there will be more number of plus ones or more number of minus ones in which case the resultant would be m plus one or m minus one, which is not what we need. So if only if n minus m is, a, is an even number, only then the answer is yes. If not, the answer is no. That is when it's an odd number, it is not a possible situation. So looking at the code, it is quite simple. We just take n and m as inputs and if n is less than m, it is no. If else, if n minus m is an even number, it is yes. Otherwise, when it's an odd number, it is a no. That's all. Let's move on to question B, binary coloring. In this case, they have given us a positive integer x and an array of integers. In this case, we have to denote x as a summation of 2 power i's with coefficients to ai in which ai can be either 1, 0 or minus 1. By this, we can instantly get the idea of binary numbers as they said in the question name itself in which case the summation is of 2 power i's in which coefficients are 1 or 0 where minus 1 is not a scenario. In this case, we can just do that, but they have given an additional constraint that there should not exist an index where two continuous numbers are non-zero. So let's open the Jamboard and analyze this. Let's take an example of a binary number where we are taking 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, in which case we are starting from the most significant bit to the least significant bit, that is a n minus 1 to a 0. In this case, we have the constraining situation where two continuous indexes are non-zero, which is against the constra constraints of this problem. We need to somehow change that. So let's denote this as a decimal number itself, in which case we write this as, let's say this one is the ith index, in which case this will correspond to 2 power i, as i is from 0 to n minus 1. This one as i plus 1, corresponding to 2 power i plus 1. So if we have to write this as a decimal number, we write this as 2 power i plus 1 plus 2 power i. This is our decimal number. Let's add and subtract 2 power i and see what happens. In that case, we get 2 power i plus 1 plus 2 into 2 power i minus 2 power i, which simplifies to 2 power i plus 1 plus 2 power i plus 1 minus 2 power i, which further simplifies as 2 power i plus 2 minus 2 power i. We can write this as 1 into 2 power i plus 2 plus minus 1 into 2 power i. So we can write this as a summation of 2 power i's with the coefficients being 1 and minus 1 respectively. 
we can also notice that the coefficient of 2 power i plus 1 is 0. So the resultant coefficients are actually 1, 0 and minus 1. So in this case, because it's 1, 0 and minus 1, as you can see, 0, 1, 1 can be written as 1, 0, minus 1. This does not have any two uh, elements such that they are non-zero. So this is valid according to this question. So every time we get a 0, 1, 1, we can just change it to 1, 0, minus 1. In which case, the first one is added as a carry specifically. This means that if it is 0, 1, 1, 1, in this case, the first one is 0, second one is 1 as it is, and then we are adding 1 as the carry from this, and then 0 and minus 1 of course. This becomes 2, which of course is not possible, so we can just write as a binary. We can change this to 0 and add a carry to the next one, which becomes 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Again, this is a valid solution. So every time first we convert the x in terms of binary and every time we get to an index such that that number and the next number are ones we just change it to one zero minus one and I add the one as the carry till it becomes one or zero so let's look at the code for this question in this case let's take n as the input that is the x and let's make it to a binary number Let's use the bit set such, uh, so that it will be easier to convert it to bits. And let's take 32 bits because uh, in the constraint of the problem, it's an integer. So 32 bits, let's name it bits, is equal to n. So the n is converted into its binary format. And let's take m as a variable to store the number of bits plus one index as a subsidiary index. So the number of bits is log 2 of n plus 1. As log 2 converts it to an integer, it takes the least integer function of it. So it's log 2 plus 1 and we are taking one extra bit so that it's subsidiary because it's when it's 0, 1, 1, it becomes 1, 0, minus 1. So there's an extra one bit. So in that case, we are considering one extra and we are making a vector of long, long ints to store this. We can use ints as well. So for every i is equal to 0 to m minus 1, v of i is equal to bits. That is, we are taking the first m bits as that is all we need. We don't need 32 itself. So for this, let's carry out these operations. Let's have a variable called carry and make it 1 just so it is more easily explainable. So for all i is equal to 0 to m minus 1 because we are taking i plus 1 as well, it should go till m minus 1. So in that case, if v of i is 1 and v of i plus 1, sorry, is equal to 1 as well. In this case, we need to change it to 1, my, one 0 minus 1. So v of i becomes minus 1 as I have shown here and next one 0 and the next one is carried over to 1. v of i is minus 1, v of i plus 1 is made to 0 and we are adding a carry so we need to like add a carry to each and every number until it becomes yeah, until we get a zero in which case the number becomes one so starting from the index of i plus two going till m minus one we are adding this carry to the bits value to v of j so in this case if v of j is one then v of j becomes 1 plus 1 which is 2 which is not in the binary system or in this system of 1 0 and minus 1s so if it is 2 that is greater than 1 we make it 0 and add the carry to the next number that is it goes to the next value of this loop until it gets v of j is equal to 0 for some index in which case it becomes 1 so it breaks the loop there and it does this for all the indices Now remember that we had taken an extra bit in the initial case that is over here we had taken one extra bit in case that the carry is forwarded on. Now if the last element is actually zero we don't need that last bit that is we can keep a store a variable end is equal to one else end is equal to zero and make the number of elements as m minus end that is if the last element is zero and number of elements is m minus one else it is m. So we see out that 
and the array size is again m minus n and we print out the array indices and that is the question solved. Let us now take a look at problem C, Nikita and LCM. Nikita has an array of integers A of length n. He defines a subsequence of the array to be special if its LCM is not contained in A. We have to help Nikita answer the question, what is the length of the longest special subsequence of A? Hmm. Question seems pretty straightforward. Let's look at some of the test cases. Uh, in the fourth test case, they've given the answer is five. Let's take a look at what subsequence is possible. Uh, in this case, we could form a subsequence 27771, which would have an LCM of 14, which is not in the array, therefore it's valid. But notice that we could have another valid subsequence 73771, which also has length 5. Okay. Hmm. How do you go about solving this question? Do you have any hints? Okay, let us try a simpler sub problem. Suppose I tell you that um, there exists a subsequence with an LCM K that exists in the array. Can you figure out the longest uh, length of the subsequence? Hmm. Oh, in this case, I think it's enough to just find the number of elements that divide K. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, suppose let us uh, answer a different question. Uh, let us say I want you to find out if it is possible to construct a subsequence such that its LCM is equal to K. Hmm. Well, to do this, can't I just go through my array? And if any element in the array divides K, then it's possible for me to find a subsequence with LCM K. That is, you're on the right track. However, you have missed an important step. Let us say I want you to find out if the array A has a subsequence such that its LCM is equal to 4 and the array A has only two elements, 1 and 2. Now notice that both 1 and 2 divide 4. However, we cannot construct a subsequence of A such that its LCM is equal to 4. Ah, I see. So then let me first go through the array. I'll find all the elements that divide K. Now I just need to check whether the LCM of all these elements is equal to K. And if it's not, then constructing a subsequence with LCM K is impossible. And if it is equal to K, then it is possible to construct a subsequence. But how would I use this to solve this question? Like obviously I can't go through all the 10 power nine different LCMs. No? That is correct. However, we can make a nice observation, which is that LCM of any subsequence of A has to be a factor of the global LCM, that is the LCM of the entire array A. Oh, wait. But even then, won't I have a lot of factors? Hmm. You would be right to think that. But through the help of OEIS, we can see that the maximum number of factors for a nine digit number is only around a thousand. So we can easily go through every single factor of the global LCM. Now let us look at an implementation to solve this problem. Okay, as you can see here, I am just reading in the array. Now we are calculating the global LCM. You might notice this line and, uh, and wonder why it is there is because if the LCM at any point exceeds 10 power 9, then we know for sure that it cannot exist in the array, so we can break. Now I simply check if the global LCM exists in the array. If it does not, then we can simply use the entire array as a subsequence and we print out the answer as n, which is the length of the array. Now as discussed before, we go through every factor of the global LCM and check if it is possible to construct a subsequence such that its LCM is equal to that factor. Let us take a look at the check function which does that. It takes in the input as the LCM which is k. It first checks if it is if the k exists in A. If it does, 
then obviously the subsequence isn't special so therefore we return however uh, if it does not then it is possible that the subsequence is special so now we go through the array and we check if the element is a factor of k if it is we include it in our potential subsequence and update the subsequence lcm if it does not we simply ignore the element now once you've calculated the L lcm of a potential subsequence we check if it is equal to k if it is we update our best guess at the solution. Once we have enumerated all the factors, we simply output it as the answer. That is it 